Well, on to my third little watercolour, using these various little techniques at the moment. And this one's going to be a very delicate one. As you see, I've already put the masking fluid on here, on the very light areas. Um, but we're going to do it very delicately this time. And instead of using those Russian watercolours, I'm going to replace those with the uh, more delicate palette of the Winsor & Newtons, so that I can get these much finer, more delicate colours. So the picture we're going to do is this one of North Landing, Flamborough, an area I know very well and used to fish off. Missed a lot of that. Why do I get seasick? So uh, maybe not such a good idea. But uh, I did have some wonderful times there. And we're going to have to play with these lovely delicate colours, plus try and indicate these textures without going too much into detail. Let's try and get the effect of light then, just with delicate colour this time. OK, so we'll make a start. I'm going to, as usual, start with my uh, mop. I've already um, gently wet the surface of the, of the uh, paints. What I'm going to do is, is just wet the paper now, just where I want the colours to go. So we're going to do this, hopefully it's a very delicate watercolour, bit by bit. First I want a graduated wash just on this piece here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to eventually go upside down and I'll take a little bit of turquoise first of all and just drop that in ever so light. It's a very, very light, gentle watercolour. So I'm just going to drop that in up here. It's going to go over these hills here just a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit stronger, the cerulean. Now I could tilt the paper the other way to do this because it will blend in even better then, but I'm not going to at the moment. So I'm going to come up here these blues gently right up and through to here Some nice little bits in the paint there I don't want a little bit stronger here now into the cobalt blue so I want fairly cool blues on this I'm just going to graduate it down now gently through there's an absolutely perfect graduation through to here then down the bottom there's just that little touch of pink, so using one of my favourite colours then the cobalt violet, I'm going to drop a little bit of pink just down to this lower edge here, just to warm up against that. And there we are, an almost perfect little graduated wash on that top corner. Actually I think it's a little bit more turquoise up there, so I'm going to take a bit more of that turquoise. I do love this colour turquoise, I'm going to just bring that down here a little bit more, I want a little bit more turquoise graduated down from the top just here to make that warmer blue seem warmer. So gently just drawing it through so we get this gentle graduation of colour that drops down. There we are. That's our top for the sky. Now we've got to let it dry here a bit because I want a hard edge just there. So I'm going to let that just dry off. What I'm going to do is just bring a, a wash of this light blue through it first of all and I'm going to go over it again with more delicate colours shortly. Just bring that down and through. And I've already got to think about um, what colours are reflecting where, so I want a bit more of this pink, this uh, lovely cobalt violet just coming down here. It's going to come down through those cliffs in a moment as well. And that cobalt violet, while I'm doing this underglazing, is just coming into the sea. So very delicately, use that word quite a bit now, just going to bring these little bits of pink through here to blend down in little waveforms all the way down through that sea. I'm going to bring some more deeper blue in there in a moment. That's all the way down to here. And then down here, we've got more of that pink just reflecting down and through. Whatever happens in the cliffs has to happen in this, so I've got to try and get this, this right to start with. It's just Blend that a bit more there. So we've got these lovely pink colours just blending down through here. Comes down all the way through there. That edge there. So we're painting wet into wet, just very, very carefully. Some of that cobalt from the sky. So I don't want to go put too much on here, a lot of hard edge up here. Cobalt from the sky coming downwards, it's going to bleed up there slightly, but I'll tighten that later. Just bring those bits of cobalt down and through here. A little bit stronger with the pink up there, the purple, just on this edge. 
I've got very delicate, lovely delicate colours in this. All right to the edges. We've got some light areas there. Coming down with that cobalt blue in between here, just letting it gently spread in ever so delicate the watercolour with this one. I really want beautiful light delicate watercolour shades. That blue comes down to there with a bit of the turquoise as well. Some lovely greens going on down into here. And that turquoise is happening right through here. It's absolutely gorgeous through here. Just coming into these bits of pink there like that. Timing is so important as well. We've got to get the timing with this absolutely right. Just bringing these turquoises out and through here now. All the way through here. waves of it gradually going darker and darker as I go along even a light edge there a little bit uh, darker here reflections coming down I'm going to put some deeper green here in a moment just want to get this rippling coming through here these reflections they come down here then I've got a slightly stronger blue. I've got this wonderful ultramarine blue that's coming in down here and a green as well that comes through it. Comes right the way through these little waves that are trickling through here. So I haven't got too hard an edge there. Just soft enough that It's blending gently into the, the background as the atmosphere goes back up there. So it's, it's a little bit of pigment on the brush that I'm using. It's not lots of water or it will just completely spread out. A bit more purple into it now here so that those cools become cooler and this warm becomes warmer. That purple is quite strong just down here, just there. Bits of it coming through in the waves here, certainly here. Lovely delicate colours we can get with watercolour like this. And as I'm using my Windsor & Newton set, the much lighter set this time. You know, a little bit of yellow going on in there, so I'm just going to take a touch of um, chrome and just drop it in on the edges here coming down to those reflections tiniest touch of the chrome on this edge and it reflects down into the water like that the same happens down here where it gets slightly greener because of course the chrome and the blue will make this sort of green colour on their own so we can mix actually into the paper by doing it this way These lovely, delicate colours look. Chrome coming right through here. That chrome actually comes out into the water in places here. Look at these lovely effects we can get. Just delicately placing it in. This is the beauty of watercolour for me. I know we've done some lovely loose ones recently, and that, that um, recent French one and uh, at Montpellier, that was very nice to show these delicate colours, but look how that's working. Now I've got some much deeper greens down here, so I'm going to take a little bit of my Viridian and just drop some Viridian. to here. Viridian, a little touch of Viridian and sap green maybe. So we're getting the greens coming in, just reflecting into these little ripples. While it's still just soft enough, 
It's just wet enough to take it. The way that those little bits of dark come into here. Reflections going on right down to there. Very, very delicate. The beautiful effects we can get. Hmm? Soften that out. Bits of green coming in here as well, just up to the distance. There. Now some much deeper blue. I'm going to just drop some of that deeper blue into the edge here, to these little bits of wave, while it's still wet enough just to receive it. Bits of that dark are going back into here as well. So this is my ultramarine. And the paint is almost drying out now, so I've got to be careful because I just want these slightly soft edges. I don't want to be too, too harsh. That reflection come all the way down. We can let that dry down now a bit. I could be a little bit stronger up here. I don't want it to be too strong up there, but just a wee bit. Maybe a little bit more. And I'll just blend that down and through. So we'll just soften that in. So this is painting wet onto dry and we're just using the brush to blend it back in up there. Might be a little touch of the cerulean again now or maybe a touch of yes cerulean and a wee bit of um, cobalt into there. And there we are that's given us our, our effect of a gentle Reflecting C coming down into here. Let that dry off now. While that's drying, I can look at this area here and these cliffs. Now the cliffs, we've got little bits of white showing already. Um, what I want there is to start off again with my um, cobalt violet. I'm going to come up to here, do this bit first. I'm going to paint wet next to wet in this case, there, in slightly layers, it's a graduated wash, in other words I've gone from light to darker here, coming all the way down there and I'm going to start breaking that up a bit now and leaving some of the little bits of white just showing through. So I'm actually doing a very, very thin wash here of the pink up to there and that oil and yellow will get stronger up here into the grasses. Certainly, because we've got the greens coming down there in a moment. Much, much stronger. There's almost no pink showing up there at all. Underneath these grasses here, it's warmer. All the way along down through here, there's some warmer bits. Warmer bits through here. Just down there, around the bottom of these cliffs here, it's much warmer. It's warm. All the way along that bottom edge there, it's a lot warmer. That lovely delicacy we get of watercolour then. Luminosity is the word, isn't it? Don't want it too hard yet. Just trying to get some of these striations as well of the of the chalks. We're going to start dropping lines across here a bit more now, like they did with the waves, to get the idea of striations of chalk coming through here. And gradually warmer still, I'm going to go back to my pink that I was using earlier. Add a little touch of purple to it and we'll just start to drop in some of these little bits of texture and shadow. Letting it spread out into the existing wet paint. It's dried almost too much there so I've got to come back here and just soften that in a bit. So. Totally different light again. Here we've got the pale, warm, cooler sunlight of uh, an English early summer. Now I'm playing with the cobalt blue as I bring these cool shadows into play amongst the white chalk. 
remembering that white is going to reflect colour as much as the sea will as well. Right now let's get back up into the, the grasses here we'll go back to our sap green and a wee touch of the raw sienna because I want a fairly warm grass up here. We'll start dropping that in. I want that to just softly come down. I'll build this up in just a moment. I just want to drop in these greens. We'll let those greens come with bits of grass coming down into the cliff here. Reflected light in the cliff as well from the greens. So it all pulls together. You might think, well, well there's colours happening in that cliff, but uh, they're there. And the, and the, the uh, paint is doing all the work for us, isn't it? Just letting the wet end of wet effects give me the feeling of these grasses back up here. And a wee bit darker still, so go down a bit more with that burnt sienna and ultramarine. Now if I wanted any hard edges I would wait until this dries now to be able to put those hard edges in. So I might put a few more in a bit later when it's a little bit drier. Just one or two dark areas happening up here. Just bring these bits of cliff out. And I'm going to do a little bit of dry brush work here as well. I'm just going to drag it through Leaving a little bit of the light paper showing just there. Remember darker colours we can put on afterwards. Let that yellow just come into here. Bring that all the way down here now. And down here. And you see how rapidly the painting has progressed. Now, back to my cobalt violet again. And the effect of sand and just breaking it up just a little bit. I want a tad more orange just down into here. Not too strong, because that's going to be too strong for the boats, otherwise, it will be clashing with them, and I'll do those in a moment. So, you can see how rapid a work can be. Working loosely like this, little brush strokes, the right colours and right places and the right shapes, and these forms should just start to appear for us. So there's my background almost, almost done. It just needs a bit of tidying up here and there. Now down here, and it's dry enough yet, let's just see, yes, just, um, we've got a lot of really deep sort of purpley red seaweed just along the edge of this bit, being washed up here, just drop that in, a little bit of it on the water's edge here as well. Let that dry and we can come back to painting the other pieces in bit by bit. Okay I'm doing a bit of work now, it's dried out enough to do that. I'll take a medium brush and a little number six and uh, just start to put some of these lovely bright colours onto here. I'm going to start off with cadmium orange. You can show how beautifully these light colours are going to go on now. It's going to go on a bit thinly at first there, like that, right up to that point there. And underneath it, we'll take some red, put a cadmium red in this case, and we'll just drop that in here so that it spreads up in there. Nicely. 
I just want to lift that out again a bit. So we don't want it spreading too much, I just want it evenly blending in. This is you can see now possibly why I put on the um masking fluid because all these little bits of white now that I did earlier are going to show through when it's uh, taken off. And one colour at a time. And there's lovely, lovely turquoise here on the boot. Whole of that will be this beautiful turquoise. Put a little bit of red into that then. warm it. I'll come up to the each side of that with blue in a moment. Hopefully this is dry enough up here now for me to work on a little. We'll just soften that in there and bring that boat out into that down into there so it's lighter and a wee bit darker when it's far side so it just blobs down like that would be nice I've got to go slightly cooler with it so we've got a grey brown to bring down into here I've got some wonderful colours going on just across here on this boat. Not going to be that easy to paint. I've got to go from very light there to quite dark in places. I'm going to start off with some cerulean blue just coming through this lot here. Quite strong cerulean blue. I'm not using the turquoise, it is cerulean this time. Let that just come down at the edge there, that corner. Cerulean blue coming into a little bit of the pink. Over there, and then a wee touch of the turquoise and then down into the cobalt blue at first I think let that come all the way down through here doesn't matter if it goes over that light bit there because that's masking fluid anyway but I do want to leave that orange line clean lighter there. Take some more of that cobalt and we'll drag it all the way along the bottom here now. The same down here. Much much deeper blue all the way through here. Lovely blue ultramarine's got to be one of our favourites, hasn't it? And right down the bottom here, it goes very dark indeed with suppression. and a little touch of brown into it, give it a slight greeny tint with the very darks here. So. 
and then um, some cool colours happening in here, shadows right through and then down and round into here and we've got to start finding these lovely bits of rope that are hanging up and round here into it in places and we'll just start to pick out little bits and bobs of let's do some slightly finer work just on areas like this where I want to show some of the planking coming down Fairly soon I will need to take away the um, masking fluid because I really do have to start working on these tones where I can actually see everything now. Right, whilst that's drying off, let's come down to these lovely leaves here. Go back to my Oriole in yellow, paint them in lovely and loose. Just managing to stick with this medium sized brush, I mean, I might well change to the, the mop. I should be using the larger mop really for something as big as this, but I'm just going to loosely paint these in on top like this at the moment to give foreground leading the eye in. Alright, and then we'll take some sap green again and just let that come in beautifully into the wet into wet very warm green at the moment but we'll pick up on that in just a moment again put some cooler greens in Cooler green, some viridian. Drop that down into here, look at the difference that makes before we go even darker in there yet. wet into wet and also in some places it's wet on the dry we're getting harder edges of the leaves deeper still with the green I'm going to take some Prussian and let that Prussian drop in down here look how dark that goes now just where the shadows are right inside the greens here And the painting is well on the way, so again we need to let it dry now before I can take off masking fluid. Well, it's coming to the evening now and uh, the painting's dried off. Can't paint tomorrow, I'm a bit busy and I might get a paint later in the afternoon, but for the moment we'll just take off this masking fluid and uh, at least it'll be ready for me when I want to work on it then. A little bit here and there.
Right, so right. Last night I uh, just pulled the masking fluid off, you can see what I've done there. And now those lights are a little bit too light, so I just need to go back a bit and take them down a fraction, just soften them a bit. Otherwise they're just a bit too bright. There we go. Whereas the whites at the front here, we shan't do that with, we'll let that stay. We'll let them stay fairly sharp and bright so that they come out a bit more. That comes across there as light in one place and then gets a bit darker in another, so we'll just bring that through like that. And then that'll be it for this painting. Just a lovely little light delicate piece. Just fluid left out. Now, we want a little bit of texturing on the beach. Not a lot. To take my hate brush again, to damp it down again like I did before in one of the other paintings, and just ruffle the end up so that it's slightly broken. And then, if I dip that into my dark, so I can just go in and add a little bit of texturing onto the beach here. So we've got the rough against the smooth, it's not just smooth pebbles. That's just about it, I think we can call that one done. There we go. I think there's maybe just a couple of little bits of tidying up to do, what can we do on here? Which I haven't quite done yet. There we are. The drawing I think sorted out. Just want to make a couple of marks here and there, that one or two darks that are here and that I forward. Just one or two small marks like this to make all the difference just as you finish off. Yeah, that's a bit better. Just look at those things we've just done. 